Greetings from the Beehive State, home of the greatest snow on earth, and yours truly, Doc Bravo. Now, last week I made a confession. I am a virgin. Now, not in the traditional sense. That train went in and out, in and out, a long, long, long time ago. But I'm talking about being a virgin to aromatic tobaccos. Now, today, we'll be looking at cult abacus my first impressions and pseudo first review of a product now if you haven't seen my yabo video from last week to know how i got both the cult abacus and this absolutely beautiful mark twain missouri immersion pipe go ahead and check it out i think you'll like it now for those hipsters in the audience and lord knows the ytpc has a few let's keep with the virgin theme Throw on that Like a Virgin by Madonna. All that glorious, glorious CGI and synthetic pop. Hmm. I can't believe that Michael Jackson hit that at one time. Unbelievable. Anyway, today let's read what Tobacco Reviews says about this glorious product. They say that this product is a smooth, Easy smoking blend of especially mild burleys, zesty Virginias, and steamed black Cavendish with a soft and warm combination of cocoa, vanilla, and hazelnut for a mellow, intriguing flavor and a crowd pleasing room note. Now, I don't know how crowd pleasing that'll be here in Utah, but we'll find out. So, the tobaccos we're dealing with today are the burleys, Cavendish, and Virginia. We'll put this to the test if we can smell the cocoa, chocolate, beans, vanilla, and nuts. These nuts. Now, <laughs> I first opened this up and I took my first lovely smell. First thing that came to mind were figs. I didn't really get the strong chocolate, but now that I've decanted, let's take another smell. Definitely can get the beans and the chocolate. Mm. No nuts. That's okay. Mm. This is going to be good. Now, I've already pre-packed my pipe. Let's rock and roll. It is very, very mild. I do get the notes. Subtle chocolate and vanilla. It's not quite as full-bodied as what I'm used to with the Haunted Bookshop. But <clears throat> definitely not used to smoking without the filter, so let's take a little bit of getting used to. That's nice. Definitely taste a little bit of the chocolate on the tongue afterwards. Now, unlike some of those stronger tobaccos, I bet you get the smell of the tobacco you're smoking on your hand on the skin. I bet this smells really, really lovely at the end of the night. Now, where would I picture someone smoking this? I love those wind chimes. Forgive me for the wind. I think I may have pissed Michael Jackson off with that saying. <laughs> Can't beat Thriller, man. Cannot beat Thriller. King of Pop. Your respects. It's got like a sweetness in there. Sweet. 
sweet, sweet, sweet victory. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. So, David, thank you very much, man. This is an absolute treat. Speaking of treats, back in the day, not too long ago, as a schoolboy, Valentine's Day. Do y'all remember making your own boxes? Hoping to get the best Valentine or the best candy. Now in the small town I grew up here in Utah, clear down in Carbon County, we'll get into some stories about that as we go along, but there was only three or four boxes of different varieties of Valentines you can get, so naturally every third or fourth kid had the same one unless their family their family went up to Salt Lake City or something and grabbed something exotic. Yeah, exotic from Salt Lake City. But so The Valentine I always looked forward to was those Ninja Turtle ones. Raphael was my favorite. He seems to be getting some justice in the movies these days. <clears throat> Never liked Leonardo. Remember the boxes that you would make. And there's always the kids who are the sadists in the class. You could tell because they would turn their Valentine's Day boxes into uh, death traps. Something out of Saw that if you put your fingers in, it would clamp and chop off your digits. I think kids today are violent. Oh. Now, so speaking out there to the gentlemen and the ladies, what are you getting that special someone this Valentine's Day? Chocolates, roses, pretty, pretty, pretty penny for roses. Valentine's Day, but I got my wife's iPhone screen fixed. That was her present, but because her birthday and Valentine's Day fall like two, three days apart, I'm not out of the woods yet. For everybody who has a wife or a girlfriend like that, knows that you can't double up. But if you can, that's a keeper. Other traditions at the Doc Bravo house come Valentine's Day. We, we do a game of doorbell ditch with the grandparents. We put the Valentine's Day down and let the kids ring the doorbell and then they rush into the car and we drive off. I don't know if that's done anywhere else. Let me know if you guys do that. It makes it fun. My little one, when he was uh, my little boy, he was about three years old, and he went up to Grandma's house to do a doorbell ditch for the first time. And he was so scared and afraid that after they rang the doorbell, he forgot to drop the Valentines. And older sister grabbed him by the hand and yanked him let's get the heck out of here and it turns out when he got in the car and i saw that he still had his valentine's day we had to wait for my mom to uh, jokes on us go around and do it a second time and he did a much better job the second time getting into the car was much faster and uh, uh it's a story that i'll never ever forget so Whatever you're going to do for that special someone in your life. She smokes tobacco. Colt Abacus. It's a good bet. Happy wife. Happy pipe. Several pipes. really enjoying this Missouri Mirshan Mark Twain it's taking a little bit to get used to because you have to cover up your hand a little bit higher as opposed to 
the country gentleman which has that bowl shape so it's easier to grasp but I'm going to enjoy this. So to everyone at home, wherever you are, whether you have someone for Valentine's Day or you don't, know that the YTPC and yours truly cares about you and hope that you take care of yourself and treat yourself to something nice this Valentine's Day. So good night, God bless, and happy piping. <laughs>